folks, Scott here with my 10 cards, one kit video featuring the Love From Lizzie March 2019 card kit. Lizzie refers to this as her Fairy Garden card kit. I think most everybody knows that I'm not a huge fan of pink and I'm not particularly thrilled with butterflies, but I always love Lizzie's decoupage sheets. So I turned to the decoupage sheets for my first cards with this kit. So my first card is on a glitter pearl white card base and we get Make a Wish. This is with one of those decoupage sheets. Now, I wasn't particularly thrilled with the giant butterfly background on this decoupage sheet. So I reached for my LDRS Fancy Squares and Little Things die. I think these are still available. I went for this to create a background for this card, and I used this larger one to cut out a piece of plain white cardstock. I covered the edges of that with some Versamark ink and then embossed that with the Powder Pink Party embossing powder. This is one of the new embossing powders from Love From Lizzie. That gave us our nice background here. It matches the pinks perfectly. I cut the smaller die from the little pink with words on it, pattern paper, and then I went to add the decoupage pieces on top of that. We've got some nice dimension there. There's three different layers. That die set also has that very interesting edge die that only cuts the edge. So I cut the bottom edge of this card front with that die. I have kind of a shaped card here. Make a wish was the sentiment that came on that stamp sheet. So I guess if you capture a fairy in a bottle, you get to make a wish. <laughs> I added a couple of stickers from the sticker sheet in the top corners of the front of this card and then added the little mini sticker that's the exact same image from the sticker sheet on the inside. I used a strip of quarter inch score tape to lay down this extra strip of that powder pink party embossing powder. To go behind my sentiment here, I like that the sentiment reads on the front and reads on the inside. Those decoupage sheets really give you a lot of options. You can use all the pieces as intended. You can use some of the pieces. You can change the backgrounds, which I did here. I really like Lizzie's deco pause sheets. I think they're great fun to assemble and layer, and I think they make extremely handsome cards, even if they are pink. <laughs> make a wish. That's our first card. Now, one of those decoupage sheets had like seven layers to it, so I figured it would be quite easy to turn this one decoupage sheet into two cards. So I grabbed one of the cream card bases, and I grabbed one of my ivory card bases from my stock, and I looked at all the pattern paper, trying to think of what I wanted to use, but I kind of thought that most of the pattern paper was a little too busy and would pull focus away from these great decoupage images. So I have to admit that I fell victim to the life-changing blender brush craze and got my own set of these. I, of course, opted for the cheap $15 set from Amazon. I really liked how these worked. I grabbed my sunburst stencil that I had made with my silhouette. I used my stencil and those new brushes with some picked raspberry distress oxide ink and created these great backgrounds. I really like these backgrounds. It covers the whole card while really focusing the attention on the decoupage. So I split this decoupage sheet up. I used layers one, three, five, and seven for the first card. I used layers two, four, and six for the second card. I actually thought about using an extra square background on the second card, but ultimately decided that it really didn't need it, and it was kind of nice to see that scalloped edge right on the card front. I did 
layer those all up with the included foam squares. After I decoupaged both of these images up, I did glue the butterflies on the top directly to the top layer. I just glued their body down and left their wings free so they could be bent up. So it's not quite a layer, but it is a layer. <laughs> I did use the Have a Magical Day sentiment on the first card. I took this extra with love sentiment from the fairy sitting on a mushroom decoupage sheet and added it to my second card. Glued everything to the front of the card, used foam squares behind the sentiments. I added a sprinkling of the sweet lilac nouveau drops on the front of these cards for a little extra shine and some dimension. And I did add little butterfly stickers on the inside writing surface of the card. I just wanted to share with you how easy it was to turn these decoupage sheets into more than one card piece. I tell you, I can only imagine how thick this card would be if you used all seven layers on just one card. <laughs> I like these. I even like the butterflies, I have to admit it. They're still pretty pink and they're still butterflies. But I think those are both extremely pretty cards. Now there is one more decoupage sheet that I wanted to use and I really wanted to use it because I thought the pastel purple party embossing powder went really well with this decoupage sheet. So I skipped the first image, started with the second image, created my own background for this decoupage card. Again, I die cut a plain white cardstock, covered that with Versamark ink, and then embossed that great pastel purple party embossing powder on that for my background. Great shine, great glitter, lots of those little mylar dots throughout. I cut a little mat for that purple background from the gold specialty cardstock from our kit and glued those right down to my card base. I then layered up the pieces from the decoupage sheet. We've got three different layers there, counting the butterfly on top. I, of course, glued the butterfly's body right down to the top layer and just bent her wings up. I went ahead and added this extra sentiment in the center just for a little extra dimension on that. I did reach into our great bobbin of ribbons and grabbed this with love purple ribbon. Went perfectly with this pastel purple embossing powder. Excuse me, pastel purple party embossing powder. <laughs> Just for you is not one of my favorite sentiments, but I thought adding the with love ribbon down at the bottom kind of completed that, made it more personal. Just for you with love. There's even little butterflies on that ribbon. I ran that ribbon through my Zyron sticker maker and glued it down to the front of the card. Then I grabbed the gold moonstone, I believe gold moon dust heel offs. These are from the November 18 card kit from Lizzie. I grabbed those and outlined the top and bottom of the ribbon with those. That matches that gold shimmer specialty cardstock just perfectly. I really like this purple card. We're getting a little bit away from the pink. <laughs> I did grab the Wisteria Purple Nouveau Drops. These came in the September of 18 Love from Lizzie kit. I thought they went really well with the purple on this. I added a couple of the gold sequins from our sequin mix along with those Nouveau Drops for some final finishing touches. This is my fourth decoupage card. I promise I won't do anymore. On the inside, of course, I splurged with that extra sticker that is the same sentiment that's on the outside, just for you, with love. I think I've done those decoupage sheets justice with these first four cards and shown you how versatile they can be, how you can use one, all, or very few of the layers to make absolutely stunning cards. So let's move along to our stamp set. When I first looked at the stamp set in this kit, my eye was immediately drawn to the dandelion stamps. So on a dark gray card base, we get another make a wish card with the dandelion blowing away in the wind. Now when I was a kid, if you blew on a dandelion head and dispersed the seeds, that was occasion to make a wish. 
I did cut a piece of plain white cardstock down to about four inches by five and a quarter. And I broke out those life-changing cheapo brushes from Amazon to create this background. Those brushes are really nice, especially if you're looking for a very soft ink blend. If you're looking for your colors to fade out to nothing. They're very soft, very easy to use brushes. I really like the different sizes of the brushes, which gave me these great eddies in the wind swooping through the background of this card. That's all blended using the Cracked China Distress Oxide ink and the Faded Jeans Distress Oxide ink. I stamped the dandelion, well, most of the dandelion, <laughs> and all of the little seed parachutes using Hero Arts Soft Granite ink. I took a watercolor marker and I colored the stem on that and a couple of the seeds. I did add my Sakura Stardust pen to all of the fluff parts on all of the dandelion pieces. So there's a good amount of sparkle on all of these dandelion pieces. I think you can see those there. Yeah. I added a bunch of sequins from our sequin mix and little dots of that Sakura Stardust pen throughout. So this little sentiment is from the sticker sheet. I added that sticker to a piece of the Silver Pearlescent Specialty Paper, darkened that up a little bit with a gray alcohol marker, and added that to my card. That's my sentiment for this. Make a wish. On the inside, just some matching flowers from our sticker sheet. I can almost feel summer on the breeze. <laughs> now we got this very interesting fairy dye in our card kit. And I was really itching to use that dye because while it doesn't have a lot of detail on the fairy's body, it has these great wings with cutouts. So I reached for my fairy dye for this card on the navy blue card base. We get fairy tales can come true. <laughs> Now, I die cut one of those fairies from the silver specialty cardstock in our kit and realized that the back side of the cardstock looks exactly like the front side of the cardstock. So I figured, why not have two fairies facing each other? Now, of course, there's little differences in the edges of a die cut, whether it's cut from the front or cut from the back. But unless you're looking really close, you really don't notice that. I took some of my glassine paper, some yellow glassine paper that was sitting on my desk, and I covered the back of those wings. Adds a little color and a little shine to those wings while still being translucent. I took another pair of circle dies from my stash, and I did cut that little kind of light olive green damask pattern paper with a small circle, cut another piece of that silver specialty cardstock for a mat behind that. I printed the sentiment on that center circle. I used the Avenir font, the Avenir font, which actually matches the partial sentiments in our stamp set extremely nicely. I'm not sure if it's the exact same font, but it's really, really close. Fairy tales can come true. I printed that on our pattern paper glued those two pieces together, added them to the card front with some foam squares. I added the two fairy die cuts with some more foam squares. And then I took a Doris border die, this nice leafy border die. I cut two more pieces of that same pattern paper, cut a couple pieces of white cardstock, glued them together. I did some embossing and a little ink blending on the top of those to add a little texture and color to those die cuts, glued those right down to my card base across the top and bottom, added some little sequins from our sequin mix and a nice heart gem from my stash. Fairy tales can come true. If you're young at heart. <laughs> I really like that sentiment. I like finishing it off on the inside of the card. I did add one of our little fairy dust bottles from the sticker sheet. I like the contrast of that green on top of that navy blue. Really makes this card pop. There's lots of shine and sparkle. Fairy tales can come true, it can happen to you, 
if you're young at heart. Jimmy Durante, I'm not. <laughs> so let's reach for those flower stamps in our stamp set. I'm always looking for something to color. <laughs> so this next card is on a actually a plain white card base. This is Lizzie's Super Smooth White Cardstock that is alcohol marker friendly. I've got a great thanks card. Bling, bling. <laughs> I could swear that those stamps are the Japanese lantern plants. I went ahead and stamped that. This is the entire stamp. It actually fills up the whole front of an A2 card, four and a quarter by five and a half. I actually stamped this stamp using some archival ink. I used Acorn archival ink to stamp this stamp so I could use my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers to color these. I actually grabbed a picture of all of my Spectrum Noir markers that I used to color this. These are them, not a huge variety, but they gave us big bang for the bucks. I really like that stamp. That of course is the stencil from our card kit. I masked the stencil down to the front of my card base, used my deco foil transfer paste to go through that stencil, let that dry, then sent it through my laminating machine with some silver foil on top of that. I tell you that deco foil is really nice. I really enjoy using that on stencils, especially word stencils. I did take my Sakura Stardust pen and I did go through and add some shine to all of the little dots that are on those stamps. So there's plenty of shine that's sharing the spotlight with the foiling on that thanks. I took one thin little mint moonstone peel off to go across the top edge of the card there. Just a little finishing edge. This is a one layer wonder card on the inside. I've got a couple of those vine stickers from our sticker sheet. Now I have to admit I did add an extra piece of white cardstock to the back of this card front just to cover up the alcohol marker bleed through. As far as I'm concerned, this is a one layer wonder, no extra dimension on this, a beautiful thanks card with a lovely foiled thanks sentiment. Now the other stamp in our stamp set seemed even bigger than this stamp. So I thought, well, let's go for a bigger card. So we've got a number 10 card, is that what we call this? This is a card that'll fit in a number 10 business envelope. And we've got, and though she be but little, she is fierce. I really like this card a lot. I stamped that other flower stamp in the two corners of a panel. I cut this panel at four inches by nine and a quarter inches. That's the size of this card, four by nine and a quarter. I stamped the two stamps in the two corners using archival ink emerald green. Now I was going to reach for my zig markers when I realized that I hadn't stamped this on Bristol Smooth cardstock. It was just on plain cardstock. So I did some palette painting. I took my Stabilo watercolor markers and scribbled them down on my glass media mat. And then I took my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen and picked up that ink and colored all of the leaves that way. This is absolutely shiny, 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 sparkly, sparkly, sparkly. This whole card is filled with sparkle and shine. Everything is colored using that palette method with the Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. I did, again, use my life-changing cheapo brushes <laughs> to brush some cracked pistachio lightly around the edges and through the background of these plants. I did grab a little bit of a blue-green marker to do the little buds on these plants. And then I reached for our fairy stamp. Now, I have to admit, I performed some surgery on this stamp. Yes, I gave our little fairy stamp a butterfly ectomy. <laughs> it was killing the patient. 
me. <laughs> So I removed the butterfly from that stamp and stamped our fairy on the side here using Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And I colored her the same way with my watercolor markers picked up with the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen. It all worked very nice. She's got tons of sparkle to her as well. I did use my Silhouette software and my printer to create this sentiment. This is in the Mona Lisa Solid font. I will have links to all of these fonts and products on my website at cardcutups.com. I printed this in green with a little black shadow behind it. And though she be but little, she is fierce. And of course, that is a quote from William Shakespeare from A Midsummer Night's Dream. It's a little extra fairy at the bottom here. Or oh, you could write a novel on a card like this, I tell you. It's a really fun card with a great sentiment. So I was adding some little sequins from our sequin mix in and amongst the plants there. I realized that our fairy looked a little odd reaching out to nothing. So I dug into my stash and I found these moonshine confetti sequins from Simon Says Stamp. So I added a little silver orb in her hands for her to play with. That was perfect. She did need something in those hands. She's definitely reaching for something. It's just not a butterfly anymore. <laughs> I really enjoy this card a lot. Of course, A2 cards, four and a quarter by five and a half, seem to be my preferred canvas, but it's great to break outside of the box and do something a little bit different and a little bit larger. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple of things that inspired this next card from me. One of them was putting that little silver orb in our fairy's hands over here. And the second one is, I recently was the lucky recipient <laughs> of a brand new set of Chibi Tronics, a whole starter set. There's like 30 Chibi lights in this. This was sent to me by somebody who thought that she would never, ever use them. I think she practiced a couple of times on the instruction book, but she claimed she would never use them, was more than happy to share them with me. I have to give a great big shout out to Andrea for sending me these. I am truly blessed. I told her I would try to use them as quickly as possible. So for our next card on the dark gray cardstock, we get... Sending you love and magic. And of course, there's a little press here. <laughs> Another light up card for us. A little love and magic for you and yours. Now this is where I actually found that Avenar font. I tried it at many different sizes, 12, 14, 16, actually settled on 15. Now this is actually the stamp sending you from our stamp set and magic is printed. Those worked great together. That's the Avenir font at 15 points. It worked great for this. I did deco foil that love stencil using gold foil this time. So I printed this and magic, then I deco foiled the love, and then I stamped the sending you above that to get this full sentiment sending you love and magic. Of course, the press here is from the My Favorite Things Interactive Labels stamp set. The fairy, of course, is stamped again from our kit. A larger moonshine sequin on her hands there. I did cut a piece of my ivory cardstock with that Simon Says stamp frames die. I cut the inside of that and then a frame out of some gold cardstock from my stash, taped those both together, and then foam taped those up to the card front with a double layer of foam tape just to cover up the wiring of these chibi lights. There are all sorts of how-to videos on how to wire those chibi lights. I wired them directly on this dark gray card base and then added this over the top, sending you love and magic. And of course, I did turn this one into 
a happy birthday card. I tell you, I'm probably going to save this for my niece's next birthday, <laughs> although it is 10 months away. <laughs> so I hope the battery will last that long. <laughs> I did add the matching sticker from the sticker sheet. I even gave her a little moonshine orb in her hands to play with. The happy birthday is from the add-on stamp set. A really nice birthday sentiment there. A really great light-up interactive card sending you love Love and magic. Bing! Big shout out to Andrea. Woohoo! Here we go. Here's a little light up fairy card. I am sending you love and magic. I hope. <laughs> now I know most of you are waiting for me to use this thank you very much sentiment from our deco pun sheet. That's a great pun, but that's a great big pink sentiment as far as I'm concerned. So I do have a pun for you this month. I figured I could get away with not using that thank you very much pun if I came up with something else. So on the navy blue card base, we get Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's never too early to start working on your Christmas cards. <laughs> I used the fairy sitting on a mushroom at decoupage pieces. I thought I could give her something different to sit on. So I turned to my silhouette and I cut this ornament out of the white shimmer specialty paper and the gold pearlescent specialty paper from our kit. I glued all the pieces of the ornament together and then I went in with my Versa marker pen and added little stripes above the paper stripes and embossed those with the Fairy Dust Party embossing powder. Another new embossing powder from Love From Lizzie. That added a little color and a little more sparkle to that ornament. I used layers four and five of the Sitting Fairy on this card and actually tucked her wing behind the back of the ornament for the illusion of a little more dimension. And it looks like she's sitting on that ornament to me. I did, of course, turn to my silhouette to print and cut this sentiment. Fairy Christmas. <laughs> this is, of course, the Smoothie Shop font. I printed and cut that with my silhouette, and I cut a shadow for that as well from Plano White cardstock, then covered that, of course, with some Versamark ink, and covered that with the Fairy Dust Party embossing powder as well. So that matches the stripes on our ornament. I attached everything to the card base using foam tape. Of course, layered up our fairy on the ornament. I did use that frames die again to cut our little scallop frame out of our white pearlescent specialty cardstock. And then I added one of our little silver fairy wands for our embellishment kit. I simply just snipped off the little ring at the bottom of that. Your die cut snips will actually cut that little ring off the bottom of that. I glued that behind our sentiment there. Fairy Christmas. There's a good fairy pun for you. <laughs> I love the fact that this is blue and gold and not red and green. I think that makes for a very fun Christmas card. If I was somebody who was mad about fairies, this would be my Christmas card. <laughs> I did add the green fairy sticker on the inside of the card. I thought she was fairly appropriate for Christmas. There's a little green for you. Fairy Christmas. <laughs> Okay, so that's actually 10 cards right there, but I did say we would count these two as one. So I've got one more to go. For a final card this month, I went to the warm blue card base. And this is my tribute to this fairy garden card kit. Leave room in your garden for the fairies to dance. And there they go. <laughs> oh, this card pleases me to no end. Of course, if you hold it straight up and down, the sparkles inside that little mini shaker will actually rotate and fall. So much fun. It's like a little 
never-ending chorus line of fairies dancing from flower to flower. Leave room in your garden for the fairies to dance. I love that sentiment. You can take it literally or you can take it figuratively. <laughs> I thought this was really delightful. I don't think I've ever seen an actual spinning shaker card before. <laughs> now this is actually a stamp from the add-on stamp set. I noticed that it had a nice up and down to it, so I stamped it twice. I did stamp it with VersaFine Onyx Black ink on some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I stamped it right next to each other. That's the end of the stamp right in the center there. Stamp those right next to each other. I did use my cheapo blender brushes to uh, cover the background of this with some light cracked pistachio distress oxide ink. And then I went in and colored all of the flowers. I colored these again with my Stabilo watercolor markers. Really nice colors. I then of course went in and fussy cut those stamps out. I thought I was going to get away without using any of my Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle dies, but I did need to cut another card front from the warm blue cardstock included in the kit. To get this to work, I used the largest Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die for that. I did use my My Favorite Things Cloud stencil and some Hero Arts White Unicorn ink to blend in some soft clouds in the background. They dried a little bit lighter than I thought they would, so I went in with my Sakura Stardust pen and gave them little silver linings. For my mechanism here, I cut out a four inch diameter circle. I centered this as far right and as far to the bottom as I could on my card panel and marked right where the center of that was going to be. That was where my little mini shaker and my rotating chorus line of fairy sequins was going to be. The only secret in making a card like this is that the back wheel and whatever's spinning in front needs to be glued down to your brad really tightly. The brad goes through the front panel, through the control wheel, and through what it's spinning. And score tape works really well to hold a brad to the paper. So it's not just spinning freely, but it's spinning with just the card base stationary in between. Leave room in your garden for the fairies to dance. I adore this card. Busby Berkeley, eat your heart out. This is my fairy follies, jumping from flower to flower. Leave room in your garden for the fairies to dance. <laughs> A great fun interactive spinning card with dancing fairies. <laughs> so that's my 10 cards plus one using the Love From Lizzie March 2019 card kit. I used a little bit of everything in this kit. I only have a little piece of that warm blue cardstock yet. I used most of the specialty paper. I didn't get to that green and gold specialty paper on the back there. I used a lot of stickers, a number of peel-offs, not a lot of them, but a decent amount. I used pieces from five different sheets of the decoupage. I only used a couple of the pattern papers in the kit. I think I was more interested in the stamps in this set than the pattern paper in this set. These seemed a little busy and would fight for attention with our stamps, especially the way I was using them. I have no problems with that. I will hoard this in my stash by all means. I did manage to use all of the image stamps in our stamp set. I didn't get quite to all of the partial sentiments. I did use three of the stamps from the add-on stamp set. I thought that was nice. I, of course, used both of our stencils, both the thanks and the love stencils, and I used a little bit of almost everything in our embellishment bag, including the Nouveau drops, the stamp. I used one piece of ribbon. I used up almost a whole sheet of the foam squares. The only thing I really didn't get to in our embellishment bag was the buttons. I didn't use any buttons. I didn't seem to have any 
button needs with this set of cards. And last but not least, I did make it through three of the new Love From Lizzie embossing powders. I tell you, I had a much better time making these cards than I thought I would initially. <laughs> this kit, of course, sold out almost instantly, and I think most of the add-ons are not available either. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I hope you like these cards as much as I do. I hope I was able to illustrate that you get so many supplies with these Love From Lizzie kits that your card making can go in 14 different directions and you can make something totally unique and totally your own. I love these cards so much. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Please remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your friends. Don't frolic with fairies. <laughs> and happy crafting. If you'd like more detailed information, better pictures, and product links, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.